States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I call this uh, Common Council meeting for Rochester on February 27, 2024 to order. Um, can't vote on the minutes, so we'll move on to uh, the public hearing. We don't have anything to discuss on that, do we? No, I don't need to put that in. I, Andy was just explaining to me what they are, so I won't. they won't be appearing anymore. Okay, all right. <laughs> Uh, we do want to have a discussion a little bit about food trucks. We'd like to get that uh, in place by this spring or early summer. Uh, I know Andy and Amy and I and maybe some others have uh, gathered up some information from around different communities across the state on their ordinances. Andy, I've got what you emailed Beth and I. Yeah. Do, do we have, is this an ordinance that we have? Well, you, you have a transient merchant ordinance, okay? okay. And so um, I think any food truck ordinance you pass would need to take into account uh, is the food truck an exception to that? Is the food truck an extension of that? But it would need to mesh with that. So you do have an ordinance that requires transient merchants to come in and, and provide some registration. But there's no rules attached to this for them to follow as far as... You have a fee, you have... There, there, there are some, but it's not very detailed. I mean, the, the transient merchant uh, 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 certificate is not something that in the city of Rochester is very hard to get. Okay, uh, well, so my, my plan, I know Amy and Beth are going to a, a DORA workshop in next week? Monday, the yeah. fourth. Amy's going. Oh, Amy's going. Oh, Amy's going. So we're going to have a lot more information on the DORA part of it. So our, I hope is by the time we have our next council meeting, we'll have a an ordinance kind of drawn up with a list of um, more detail? Yeah, because I, I, I think part one of the things that uh, um, we kind of need to consider as a city is are we, are we looking to regulate the service of food? Are we looking to regulate the parking of vehicles for commerce? Or are we looking to do some of those, do we, uh, multiple things? One of the things I checked on this afternoon was um, uh, House Bill 1258, uh, which is about food truck regulation, and that is still live. I think they approved an amendment today regarding fees. Most of that is designed to provide a, uh, a statewide uh, uh, certification so that someone doesn't have to go through, through every health department and meet a different set of regulations. But it clearly seems more aimed at restricting or, or directing the actions of a county health department. So what I think that's probably going to do, assuming it passes in some form, I think what it's probably going to do is, is put us in a position where if we regulate, it, we regulate food trucks, we're not going to be regulating the inner workings of the food truck. How, how the food service is, is managed, it's going to be more along the lines of this is where you can do it, and, and these are the times you can do it. I agree. Know, that kind of I thing. agree. Yeah, and so I will stay on the other part. I do, I do think it's worth waiting uh, just to make sure until, in, until that bill either dies or it's signed into law by the governor uh, before we pass ours, um, or at least the governor says he's going to sign it. You, know. well, you think that will happen this session? It's about over. So well, the session's not over, but it's still it's okay. still live, and they were voting it's for it. Like it's yes, we're in the second okay. half of the session. Okay. It's already it's already being it's a House bill. It's already been debated in the Senate and has been up for one amendment. So it may go to conference committee, and they may have to to work that out. But I just uh, I, I I I can get a pretty good idea of what they're trying to regulate. But I would uh, uh, I would suggest that we either draft something that steers way clear of what they're trying to do or, or wait to make sure there are no last minute amendments that we don't see coming. Gotcha, okay. So. All right. Anything else on that? Do you have anything you want to? No, I mean, I looked at the ones, I printed them off, I'll be reading them, but I know some of them were showing maps and determining specific places that food trucks could be, and I wasn't sure, and I don't know if we need to ask if it's city property or if it's private property, how that works related to the where and the times. 
you know, how do we determine that? What's the best method to research and figure that out? Because I think that could be very nebulous. So if there's direction you could provide as I'm going okay. to that meeting and, and asking different individuals directed questions. And, and it, it may be it may be good if we want to put a ge geographical limitation on that to do that with Dora in mind because Dora's we're going to require one anyway. That's what I was wondering is yeah. that looking at some of those ordinances that there were maps and I know with Dora it has to be a specific designated outdoor refreshment area. So if those two things coincide, you probably should do them. I'm assuming at the same time. Yeah. In combination. Yeah. I could see I could see a food truck geographical limitation being larger, but I don't think the door should be outside of the food truck area, I, yeah. I would think. Yeah, and I think that if we can be strategic in that and figure out how those work together, whatever sure. direction, so I'll see what I find out on Monday and then okay. we'll circle back around. All right, very good. Um, Beth, you want to talk about the city emails or the cybersecurity? Yeah, um, there's not a whole lot of people here, but um, uh, we now have city council emails. I have passwords for you all. So I am strongly encouraging everyone to have a council email instead of using, you know, your personal emails or your work emails. So I will be glad to um, get with you and give you your password. And according to Bob from Analytics, all you have to do is add that email address to your Outlook or to your Google or, you know, one of those. And that's supposed to work with the password then you can change it to whatever you want the password to be however there are some other things that go along with the cybersecurity for the city it's called know before and it's like little uh, training videos that come out that you have to watch um, they're like 15 minutes and um, that way they you know you're being advised on how, what's going on it gives you phishing examples and then they send you little tests emails that you don't really know they're Tests. You just get these emails that kind of look like they might be weird. So don't click on them. That's the key. So and then I get a report of all the people that click on them. So statistically, we have not done very well. Uh, people like no to click on emails. Huh? So I want to open. <laughs> <laughs> that might be good. If you forward them or delete them, it doesn't count as a click. And I've been forwarding lots of them because I don't know a lot of the vendors and things, and that's what they usually are. They're like vendor tricking you with vendor emails, and so I've been forwarding them to a lot of people, and then they say, "No, we never heard of this one," so I delete them. I took that test today, and I'm, you know, how poor I am at technology, <laughs> but it was simple and pretty. Yeah, they're they're, they're really pretty easy. Pretty right? It's not hard to take. And but the, you're not going to fail the test. Yeah, and the reason we're stressing it so highly is that the state board of accounts is really starting to look at cybersecurity. It's become a big, big issue with the state. They have their um, Indiana, it's IoT, whatever, something of technology um, that they're bringing into things. So I'd like to kind of be ahead of the curve and instead of getting our hands slapped, I'd just like to say, yes, we are working on that. So, so Beth, as a point of reference, will the council folks be required to take those tests as well? So you'll be sending, you've signed They said up. they come to you. The okay. know before has your email address and then it'll just come to you and it'll say, it'll, it'll have an email and just says, you know, this training is available. You just click on it. You can do it any time, you don't have to do it right that second. And it you, just, can, you, you know. can pause in the middle of it. If yeah. You can pick it back up. Well, and I take them, I do it for my county job for Cosgasco. They are not that hard. No. Bob and Brian, I promise. They're yeah. not they're that hard. They're actually they're not kind of interesting. Our yeah. bank has that. Yeah, yeah, it's really a good It's really service. pretty cute. Yeah, 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 yeah it, it is. So. Like a super yeah. So, so, and then if, and if you program. if you have any problems once you try to get all that set up and it doesn't work, call me and I'll get with Bob because everything they assure me things will work, but then somehow it just never seems to come out like it's supposed to. So I just I'm available to help you with the emails. So they'll send those classes to our council. No? Yes, okay. once we get them set up, that's okay. The key. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, but I'll send that. Your your email address is actually your district. It's like council one two three four five at rochester.in.us. So I'll send you that. But I ha I don't really want to send the email and a pack and an email or email a password and an email. Uh, Any other old business? Okay, Janet. Could you introduce yourself to everyone? And you, I don't care. You stand right there. It's fine. <laughs> Well, I feel like I can see more, okay, but that's fine. I'm back a little bit further. Um, but I do have some handouts to give you. Let me just take one and pass it. 
Um, my name is Janet Shally. I'm the director at the Fulton County Animal Center. I've been there for eight years now. Um, every year I like to come and to the city meeting and just give a presentation or quick update on what's going on um, the past year. So I'll be reporting on the year 2023. Um, I gave you all um, a sheet with all of our statistics ranging from 2013 to 2023, so 10 years of data. I love numbers, um, and I think it gives a good picture of where we were and where we're headed. Um, things are going really well. Um, overall, our cat shelter uh, intakes have increased. That's not the greatest thing. Um, it's, we, 672 cats entered our facility in 2023 versus 648 in 2022. For dogs, there was a slight increase in intakes, 336 versus 325 for the previous year, but pretty similar in all categories, being uh, stray by public, stray by animal control, owner surrender, transferred in, and born in care. We had our best year yet for cat adoptions. We had 534, um, only 486 in 2022, so almost 50 cats um, more than the previous year. Our city rate uh, study for cats, it's only down by 1%, 94.6% uh, cats saved every year, 97.3% for dogs. All of our cat euthanasias um, or deaths are due to illness and injury. We never euthanize for space or behavior for cats. Um, and we've had a few dog aggression cases and a few illness injury. Um, but overall, we're still considered no-kill, which is a 90% save rate, so we're still considerably above that, which is great for our community. Um, length of stay, we have seen a slight increase in length of stay for both cats and dogs. Adoptions have kind of slowed down. This is a national trend, though. Um, in 2022, our uh, average length of stay is 33 days, and last year it was 36. For dogs, in 2022 is 20 days, and last year it was 22 days. So that's just an overall um, update on our numbers. If you're interested in a bigger picture, we do have this posted on our website as well. Uh, our low-cost vaccine clinic, that opened in May 2021. That was from a grant from Dick Belcher. So um, it means a lot to me, and it, and it means a lot that we're doing so well, and there's a big need for it in our community. If this is a low-cost uh, vaccine clinic, we see um, anywhere between 30 and 40 animals in a three-hour span. So um, about every five minutes, we get a new client. And um, rabies vaccinating, um, fetal leukemia, you know, important vaccines and preventative care. In 2022, we saw 435 dogs and 267 cats through our vaccine clinic for the year. That's a total of 702 animals, and we profited 20,000. And last year we saw 662 dogs and 309 cats for a total of 971 animals and a profit of $30,000. So any profit we make from our vaccine clinic just goes into um, programs that we have for the animal shelter. So overall our vaccine clinic is going very well. We just hired our third part-time veterinarian to have our clinics about every two weeks now instead of once a month. We're typically booked out about a month in advance. The need is still huge. Um, people are coming from surrounding counties as well. Um, we've got Marshall County. Uh, we often have um, Pulaski. I mean, all the surrounding counties, they're driving to our facility for this vaccine clinic. Um, we're also looking into possibly starting some cat spay-neuter days at our facility. Uh, the closest spay-neuter, low-cost spay-neuter clinic is probably Lafayette, hour and a half. So um, we're kind of in a dead zone as far as accessible, low-cost spay-neuter. We have transport going to these uh, low-cost facilities, but it's not enough. Um, we it really need something local. So we're looking into that. I've got the veterinarians on board and really willing to do this. We're just kind of starting slow. We're going to start with shelter cats and hopefully open it up to the public in the next, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, other news, we did receive a $12,000 grant from PetSmart Charities to hire a part-time staff member for our off-site adoption coordinator at the Warsaw PetSmart. That, we adopt out probably a third of our cats there. I think just the foot traffic in that store brings adopters and they see a cute cat and can't help but go home with it. 
And we're currently raising funds for a new transport van, spay neuter equipment, and until we can get our own spay neuter going, we still provide assistance to those who can't afford full, full price spay neuter prices. And lastly, how we further help our community, we have our pet food pantry. It continues to be a huge need in our community. We help about approximately 40 households each month. Um, most of these households have multiple pets. Um, so you're about 150 pets a month that we're helping feed. Uh, we have a discounted adoption programs for seniors and veterans. And our volunteer programs is likely the largest in Fulton County. We've got school groups, community service. We just um, started a program with the jail chemical addictions program, which has been a wonderful thing. And our general volunteers. So we have about 25 active or ongoing volunteers and probably 75 to 100 volunteers through our doors annually. So that's my update for last year. And I just wanted to thank uh, the city and the council for supporting our organization every year. Okay. Thanks, Jenna. Yeah. Any questions? What's the biggest challenge to getting that spay neuter situation? Funding. <laughs> I, I anticipate this much. Yeah, I just got a, an Excel spreadsheet with all the supplies we would need to do cat spay neuters. And it really isn't as much as I thought it would be. Um, but it's just not in our budget. So I'm getting creative with some fundraising. I think it'll be a good thing once we get it going. Well, ultimately, if there are an increase in cats, we know how cats <coughs> have exactly. So I'm assuming that would help a yeah. lot with that. Yeah. So. And having it be local, too. I mean, some people just don't want to put their pets on a transport vehicle that goes an hour and a half to be, you know, something yeah. local that's affordable and accessible. It's really needed. Yeah. Let's talk about that more when I sit down with yeah. you. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Steve. Well, <clears throat> Steve Fishburne representing the uh, Rochester American Legion and the Rochester and Kiwana VFW clubs. Um, we're, uh, the last year, I think the council voted to fund like $2,500 towards the uh, veterans' flags and grave markers we put up at the all the Fulton County cemeteries every year from Memorial Day. And uh, we're just wanting to make sure we keep that going. And uh, well, I talked to John Garrett on the phone a little bit ago, and he said the last meeting you might have talked about upping it to three thousand. Uh, so I mean, we'll, we'll take all we can get. <laughs> I, I don't know that we talked in the last meeting, but I do think I, I thought we had a budget item from last summer that we did set some money aside. Oh look, I, I, I don't know that. Do you remember Brian? I don't remember. I thought we talked about it. I believe we put it in an ongoing. Yeah, I think last year you kind of put it in as at least five years mm -hmm. to 25. John said he talked about maybe up it to three because, I mean, they, they went up a bunch this year. <coughs> if you can do it, like I said, we'll take all the money we can get. <laughs> all the help we can get. We just can't. How do you need the money? You need to date. Well, we've got them ordered already, but we don't have to pay for them until we get them in. So. When will they come in? I, 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 I mean, can't we, we should have a form next month. I would hope it's pretty rare that we don't. But I would hope end of March okay for us to. Should be, that. yeah. Yeah, it okay. should be fine. If you don't need to come back March, but we'll push it. Through. I'm, we'll I'm, I'm no biggie, but. 3,000. Yeah, that'd be great. And like I say, they went up quite a bit this year, so inflation and everything, so. Yeah, but, but I do think there was some money budget. Okay. Yeah, I, think there, I think there's some, some place. Okay. Yeah, good deal. Thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. Any questions for Steve on that at all? Okay. <coughs> Other new business I have is a council appointment to RDC, which we can't do tonight. So, um, is there any other new business? So, uh, I was going to say, because Marty's not here, I was going to allow him to say this, but I'll say it. Um, so, uh, Fulton County Hope is working with um, IUK and Transpo to put together a countywide survey for transportation to understand transportation needs for um, employers as well as uh, the general public. And so that will be distributed hopefully this week. Um, the purpose of that survey is to help get the commissioners and others at Transpo the, um, the understanding of what the true transportation needs are for the county. Had uh, quite a few individuals say that there are challenges in providing transportation to work as well as just in the general public. So 
Polk County Hope is hoping to be able to get that information. It will be presented once the survey is done and back to IUK students, they will analyze it and it will be presented as a nice document to share what the needs are based on. So I've been meeting with different, uh, different town boards such as Fulton and Akron to try to get that out there. But I wanted to say that out loud because I know this is on the recording as well to bring it to churches, to service providers, um, in all the towns in hopes that we can get accurate data. So. Anything else on new business? Okay, department reports. Chief Butler. Uh, good evening. For the month of January, Stretcher Fires, one in Rochester Township. Auto fire alarms, one in the city, one in Rochester Township. Mutual aids, two in Union Township, one in Liberty, two in Henry, one in Mentone. Vehicle fires, one in the city. Accidents, two in the city, one in Newcastle Township, one in Rachel Township. Medical assist, 21 in the city, seven in Rochester Township, three in Newcastle Township. CO checks, two in the city. Service calls, two in the city. Canceled calls, one in the city, two in Rochester Township. That should equal 52 calls, and we conducted one night of training. Also, the last Board of Works meeting we did get permission to open bids for the new tanker, and I have the specs out to four different vendors at this time. So bids, sealed bids will be back to the Board of Works. Um, we're back to the city by April 4th, and will be opened up the morning of April 5th at the Board of Works meeting. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions for Tom? Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Chief Shot. Uh, for the month of January, we had 17 accidents. We issued 36 warnings, 32 offenses, 26 case reports, 405 calls for service, 32 lockouts, 12 towed vehicles, seven people incarcerated, and you have the crimes that those people are lost for. Um, other than that, we are working with the county, switching from our Cody system to Spillman. Uh, it's going to be an investment upfront investment, but it's going to be overall, it, it's going to provide a better resource for our officers, um, for us to be on the same system as the county, uh, the same database. Uh, but with that comes a, a side effect. Our quote from Spillman doesn't include CAD, which is computer aided dispatch. So mm -hmm. we, if we do switch, we will be forced to, to go to a centralized dispatch. I know the mayor in the commissioners are working out the details on that, but it looks like we're going to get that accomplished. It's probably going to be an upfront cost of around $100,000 between um, hardware for the vehicles and for the, the software itself. Having said that, Cody is changing its platform and we would have to invest the same 30000 on hardware for the vehicles because it's going to be all mobile-based, uh, a cloud-based system, so we would have to have the, the hardware in our vehicles anyway, so I, I think it's just going to be a, a better process for everyone involved to, to make the switch to Spillman. That way, if we're on the same dispatch or, or even right now when dispatch is covering for us on midnights, uh, they're entering incidents in Spillman, but we don't have those accurate records in Cody, so it's duplicating work, and it's just going to be more efficient if we're all in the same system. Yeah, we had a great meeting two weeks ago. All those uh, yeah. law, law enforcement on the city side, law enforcement on the county side, the county commissioners, uh, uh, 911 dispatch uh, just came in here for a couple hours and had a great conversation and figured out the efficiencies of some things. We've got a few details to work out, which won't be an issue. Yep. So we're excited about the collaboration we're having between the departments. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to that. And I think all the, as you mentioned and Travis mentioned, your guys, your people uh, are excited about. Everyone is, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're definitely Good. excited about the, the update in our technology and, and the advancements that it's going to have for us. Good. Good. All right. Anything else for a few shots? Thank you, Andy. Thanks. Rick, you got any county stuff to tell us? Oh, maybe a little. Um, I don't want to steal Amy's thunder, but last night we had an area plan meeting, and uh, one of the big things you're going to see come up is we're going to have to do our wind and solar ordinance. I know Bob, Bob was 
in the middle of the wind project the last time. Now you get 80 in the middle of it now. So, but, uh, but what we did is back, uh, oh gosh, what was that, Bob? Five, six, seven years ago, we put a no wind ordinance in. And well, so then we didn't bother with the solar. Well, now we're starting to get into the solar. So this summer we put a moratorium on solar for a year. So now we got to update our ordinances and figure out what kind of ordinance we want and what best serves the county. So I know there's a couple ordinances that they're sending out for us to look at. Once Marshall County, once Costco County. So you'll hear that process. That always gets to be a hot button issue. It seems like so. Just giving you a little warning on that. Other than that, uh, you know, we're still working. We have not got an ambulance contract signed yet. We're still working on that. Um, hope to have one signed any day. Um, other than that, we appreciate, like you say, we're working, trying to get you guys uh, all on the same page so we can all do dispatch together. I think it makes sense. It does. So, but, but other than that, unless you guys got some questions for me, uh, that's all I got. Anyone? Thank you, Rick. Appreciate yep. it. All right. Um, committee reports, downtown partnership, should have. Lake Manitou Association, their planning commission, getting on that uh, more than what Rick said. Uh, Dwayne wrote my notes for me because <laughs> uh, this was my very first time out and I didn't. So uh, they talked me into executive secretary for the area plan. So uh, new officers, uh, Dwayne Borders, chairman, Gloria Carvey is vice chair, and then I am executive secretary. Uh, they <coughs> did the rules of procedure. They were reviewed and did minor changes. Um, and then there was a, a zoning change on property in Akron that was passed, basically taking property that had been zoned as agriculture and um, the gentleman had purchased some additional property adjoining and wanted that to be turned into commercial. So um, nothing too exciting. Still have a lot to learn, but excited just to understand the process and talk about solar and understand more about renewable energy. And then animal, animal adoption. We haven't had a meeting, but I will be meeting with Janet on uh, March 7th to understand the needs. So there's no meeting tomorrow night with area plan. It was last night. Uh, I'm still understanding that. So they've got the area plan and then they've got the BZA Rochester BZA. Is tomorrow night. BSA is tomorrow night. BZA. Is that B BZA. BZA. Mm -hmm. Is that the annex building? Mm -hmm. okay. It should be. Yep. Gotcha. Heather is supposed to walk us yeah. through. BZA. Yeah. Huh? Uh, city BZA happens here. Yeah, but that county's tomorrow night, right? Mm -hmm. On the go kart track. Oh, is it tomorrow night? Whatever yeah, night it is. I had something down here for tomorrow night. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I think it's a city BZA tomorrow. Oh well, yeah, maybe it is city then. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. And that's here. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. At six o'clock. Yeah. You had me confused too. That's right. Confused. That was one interesting thing to learn is the area plan and then all the multiple BZA. Um, yes. Just so. <laughs> Heather Redinger is going to explain that to understand. There's a county BZA and a city BZA. I like your branch. Okay. <laughs> uh, Michael, you got anything from Fedco? We yeah, a few start. things. Do what? A few things. Um, we had the Korean training last Monday. And I think it was pretty well attended. I don't remember how many people there were. I think it was 27 or something like that was the list. Um, the feedback I've got, it was very good. They, they liked it uh, for the most part. I've been talking with them to see if they would come back and do another training, but this time geared more toward the hospitality industry. Um, because uh, I think what we found was their Koreans are very organized people and they expect certain things they're not expecting to break the laws or anything like that don't even get into that but um, they just they have their ways and their customs and things how they like to be treated so um, we're working on bringing them in back into Rochester and Fulton County for that at some point um, stellar training the stellar grants are being reactivated and the training is next Monday and Tuesday in Danville. Um, the problem here is there's three training sessions. I've been told that there are 50 um, what they're calling districts, uh, which 
basically are 50 different counties and, and communities, individuals by themselves who are attending these trainings and the problem here is statewide only two grants are awarded. So the 50 is out of my six county regional planning district. I don't know how many there are in the other districts. So out of all, you know, 200 or whatever it's going to be, only two grants will be awarded at the end of the day. Uh, but it's worth trying. So I've been meeting with, go ahead, you have a puzzled look. No, I just I just know how much work it takes. It's like, are you kidding me? You know, I mean, I know you told me how yeah. burdensome it is to just apply for it and then, okay. Well, if we don't apply for it, we don't get our it. money goes someplace else. <laughs> yeah. And I'd, I'd rather make the effort and die on that hill than not. Um, so that's under, under work. Um, the housing study, there will be a full virtual committee meeting on March the 11th. Right now it's set from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, we're getting ready to proceed into the next step. And I've already had um, one meeting face-to-face -face with a developer and I've had uh, two telephone calls from developers who are interested in what's going on, where we stand, so I backgrounded them on that. Um, so there's a lot of interest going on right there. The, uh, I can tell you that the location that we're looking at right now is the property um, behind Walmart. That's to get us started. Um, we may look at other locations. I've got some ideas in my head that uh, I'd like to talk about uh, some other projects while they're in town to do some certain things. Um, so that's that's that. Um, okay, the next thing um, is the Putts building. Um, I've been talking with the mayor and I had a conversation with um, young lady who's running the bail bonds side of the uh, business and it's our understanding that um, Putz himself has got thirty thousand dollars he can put toward stabilizing the building which is what they want to do first before you do anything else stabilize the wall stabilize the, the bottoms floors um, I've talked with RDP and asked for between $5,000 and $15,000 in facade grant money toward it. That alone would help stabilize the, bu the building. That's not going to get anywhere near repairing that building. The last I heard, um, the wall had moved another six inches out. Um, RDP asked uh, Split Road Media to fly a drone over the top of the building and there's a big sinkhole in the roof. So, you know, some kind of action needs to be taken. Um, I'm working, trying to find some grants for stabilization. The estimate from six months ago was about $170,000. At this point, the way with that roof, the way it's going, you're probably up to $200,000, $225,000 just to repair the building. And that's not the inside, that's probably just the outside. Um, so I'll keep you up to date on that as that develops. Um, the next thing is the industrial park. Talks are still continuing. We're getting more and more bites on property, uh, expanding it. I think we have about 100 acres at the moment, maybe a little more. Um, what we've come up with is in the last two weeks, I've had a number of phone calls, um, one from a company and one from, well, two from the state and one from a site selector, and one from a company, so four calls. Um, we're probably going to have to look at 400 acres as a minimum, get water, sewer, electric, everything out there as quickly as possible. There is a lot of interest all of a sudden in, in Fulton County um, as far as getting that park started. I've got a, a phone call from um, one of the TV stations up in South Bend. They were under the impression that the park was already completed. 
<laughs> I set them straight. It, it's just dirt and corn right now. Um, but they're interested. Uh, so there's a lot of activity going on. And I guess the last thing I would say on that on this site is the mayor's heard us. Me and, me and Charlie Sparks talked. 31 and it's becoming a supply corridor. Traffic's picking up every day. You can tell it. Um, there's another, there's been another major announcement in um, the South Bend area that a data center, multi-billion dollar investment is going in right next to the new Carlisle EV plant. Um, knowing data centers, the one that I that contacted us um, was interested in, in seeing if there was anything in Fulton County. Uh, they were going to employ any place between 75 and 125 employees. Um, we couldn't meet their power needs for the, um, I've been told that uh, it would take us about three years to get to the power needs that they had. Um, so at least we're getting noticed and people are contacting us. The state is sending people our way. I've had site selectors giving me calls, just where are you on this? What can, you know, can we put you on the list? No, not right now, that type of thing. So um, I think we need to start considering how much and how many resources we can throw to get this thing up and running ASAP um, because this thing is gonna move fast and those those buildings are going to get built real quick and we need to be up and running when we can the last item is um, I'm working with the state strategic site inventory group uh, we're going to set a meeting to uh, sit and talk about um, how we should proceed on identifying additional sites all across Fulton County and those meetings will happen in the next couple of weeks Right now, that's um, Brian's report. Any okay. questions? Thank you, Doug, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I will say that there is uh, things moving all the time in this direction as far as development going. You know, I got a call today that was very encouraging about interest uh, in land option or whatever we can uh, do work with them. Uh, part of this industrial park development, I will say. I don't want to say we backed away by any means. It seems like everyone on news reports, companies are backing away a little bit or slowing the progress down on the EV side, which never I, I was never too confident in anyway. I felt like there's, I don't want to go into it. But anyway, we had this discussion, Charlie and I and, and uh, Mike, a month or so ago, and uh, even without the EV plants, we are in a prime position to attract business in uh, industry. Uh, so we just have to get prepared. Um, but I honestly think we're gonna be able to pick and choose who we put out there. And, and I wanna be sure we don't put buildings out there that are gonna be empty in five years. So that's that's our challenge. But I, I'm real confident that um, we're gonna be seriously looked at if we can get ourselves ready for it. So I'll, piggy, I'll piggyback on that real quick. Um, there's one contact that we've had that if it, they want to go to the north side uh, of the county. So we're not looking any longer at just one location, one park. We're looking at one big one um, and probably multiple smaller ones. Um, and it's not EV who contacted us. So it's not going to be all EV all the time. It's, it's going to be a whole mix and that's what we actually need to have. Yeah. Oh, well, I was just going to add too, as far as the Fedco report, as far as Blackheader goes, I know the plan is by the end of May, as soon as the temperature gets right, we'll have that paved, it'll be ready to market. I mean, it'll be ready, right? Shovel ready. Talk to NIPSCO. Well, NIPSCO, we don't need their gas until winter, do we? No, not really. But I think we can start marketing it as soon as the paving is finished, and yeah. that should happen in the spring. Right. And it, there's, there's things happening in Apache or, or plans being made, I'll put it that way, that's all I can say about that. But as soon as it gets finished, I think there's some plans, uh, much needed um, items that we need in this community are being looked at out there. So that's exciting too. So there's 
there are some good things uh, beginning to roll. And I want my dad too. The Times Theater was packed full Saturday night. Um, I, from what I understood, the restaurants were pretty full as well. Mm -hmm. You know, those kind of events when you draw people into town, it boosts everybody's prosperity. Um, excited about what she's doing there. She's got a lot of other big things planned going on. We got uh, maybe hopefully some outdoor events going this summer as well. Um, Can I brag for a second? Yeah. So uh, we had to go to training. Uh, the Republican Party had the council or uh, the, the Congress of Counties training. And this was the first time that I've ever been in a training like this where people came up to me and said, you're from Rochester, right? We're watching you. Yeah. We hope that you take every advantage of all of the things that the legislators are doing because we have high hopes and we, we have every belief that the city leadership will make things happen. And that is actually the first time that's ever happened to my knowledge. And so I just sat there in pure shock and, and said, yes, sir, we'll do the best we can. Um, I've, ha I've had my regional people come up to me and, and say, it's nice to see Fulton County come alive. Yeah. Well, I'm grateful for Charlie and Mike. I know how busy they are and all they got going on. And they've been, uh, it's a great, great team we have in economic development. And we're excited about that. Um, like there's something else I was going to mention, but too many things going on right now. <laughs> That's good. Uh, anything else? Uh, Redevelopment Commission, we got a meeting in the morning. Um, don't know if our quorums, we couldn't elect our county representative tonight, but uh, talking about further things along these lines. Park Board, Bob, you only got five minutes. <laughs> but they, had, they, they had a two and a half hour meeting. <laughs> the uh, park board met February 12th, all evening long. It uh, started at six and it was approaching nine before I think most people left the parking lot. But they had a lot, uh, lot that they discussed and talked about. Uh, some of the highlights that uh, I recall is that uh, tell it to golf area that they're, they're going to probably have a tournament this this summer with the IGA and I uh, I'm not a golfer myself I'm a, I'm a hacker uh, but I guess that's a, I mean that's a big deal so and uh, looking for hotels and Airbnbs and, and that kind of thing so kind of very exciting stuff and the maintenance is going on out there they're working on their signs um, pools coming along the uh, Kids this summer, the kids in the park program, they got they're working on some grants. Uh, Lindsay uh, Barnes gave an update on that. It sounds like they got funds, they got funding, and they talked about the number of kids that they're going to have. Uh, the backboards are getting worked on at JC Park. There was a lot of discussion, a lot of time spent on uh, doing a comprehensive plan. They, they also received a presentation from uh, sitescapes on different types of uh, playground equipment, which was very, that was interesting. Um, even for an old guy like me, some of that stuff looked pretty cool. I could see kids wanting to play on it. So, uh, interest in, in doing a comprehensive plan uh, and trying to figure out how they were going to pay for it and who was going to do it. And I, see, I think that was on the next part of the agenda as far as for next go around but very excited uh, a lot of a lot of things happening there we do have an adult leadership academy in the county and i think way they talked to me they were going to try and incorporate the youth leadership academy into this as well but they're working on the beach restoration project over across from dairy queen trying to get it where it's decent it's a, you know as i've said many times it's kind of an embarrassment we need to get rid of it or make it nice so we're going to try and do some things uh, we kind of found out what the jurisdiction was, was with uh, um, DNR, and we were, we were with the understanding they had jurisdiction up further than they actually do. So we're just going to do our own thing, what we want to do out there. Uh, they don't like it tough. They don't have jurisdiction in those areas. So we want to make it nice to the kids. I mean, the kids that use that are the kids that need uh, to get uh, to have something like that. So we want to make sure we can make it uh, presentable and the families will enjoy going out there maybe have reunions family reunions at the pavilion would that be nice to have people that 
want to look forward to using it. So, uh, but they're running with that. They had a two and a half hour meeting in the conference room. I sat in for 45 minutes. They said, can we stay in there for a little bit? And there was like five of them and they stayed for another hour and a half. And it was like, they were excited about uh, getting some things done. So hopefully we'll see some energy uh, put into that project and, and get it, I'm hoping, in good shape and we should by Memorial Day. So that's our hope. Uh, solid waste, no, BZA, no, tree board, no, water board, no. I will say on the water board, we had a meeting with Commonwealth um, yet, uh, no, yesterday, I think, for a couple hours. Um, I know we need a well field, I know we need a tower. Bottom line, we were told that no matter what, but we can, we're trying to lump that into the uh, infrastructure project with the Ready 2. And looking at a site out across the highway for Wellfield, which we're waiting on Peerless to report on whether that's a, a possibility or not, uh, as far as a Wellfield, but we, we need more airspace uh, or water in the air. So we need to uh, look at that, but that would also take us a step closer to being able to uh, handle the growth of an industrial park. So it's all part of the project. But that was the, that and the lead pipe thing, which my, I sat quietly for about an hour in their discussions, and it was like tremendously overwhelming to me that there's there's no way there's going to be enough money to fund the lead pipe plan the way it's put out there right now. They, there's no way, not in every community across the country, there's no way. So typical EPA going beyond their common sense reality and saying that's what you got to do and at some point they're going to come back to a level okay well we got to cut this back some because we can't afford it it's obvious to me so I finally said let's just go through the jump through the hoops as we need to but let's wait for them to do a little bit of retracement and uh, but we've got that to deal with as well but there's funding available through grants to get that done so anything else tonight um, in your packets this is not for everybody, but uh, there's a nepotism um, form that needs to be filled out and turned in. And then I, I'm not familiar with Brian and, and Bob. If you have any kind of conflict of interest, that's all. There's also a form of that in there that um, needs to be completed. So. In today's packet. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Well, we can't vote to adjourn. So what do you guys want for breakfast tomorrow morning? <laughs> <laughs> I guess this means adjourned.